Damavans just had come, somehow become that symbol of my childhood dream. two aims for me. One was just to take a group of people who are ski mountaineers to climb down my land on skis and ski off it. But a secondary objective for me is for me to climb this mountain, a kind of childhood dream of mine. I know very little about Iran, I suppose, beyond what I know and read about in the media. Um, I've read quite a few reports of people who've cycled around the world and quite interestingly almost all of them rank around as one of their top countries both that most challenged their preconceptions but also that was one of the most hospitable um, and sort of friendly places they've visited. Culturally it will be an interesting one. Family and friends ask you if you've uh, lost your marbles by uh, uh, going, to, going to Iran. Uh, many colleagues at work trying to talk me out of it. Absolutely uh, fascinated with uh, with Tehran, to be honest. Just just absolutely fascinated. Really humble people, really rich culture, um, very kind of saturated atmosphere as well. It's uh, it's really hit us in terms of you know what what it is to be in, in this country. We started our acclimatization climb with Golizad. This whole kind of mountain is called Golizad. Oh, it's just such an amazing place. I mean, Damavant's view, just, just the backdrop. It's just so, it's just so hot. It's like, it's too hot for a jacket. Yeah, too hot for a hat, too hot for gloves. town called Kaj, which is just outside Tehran, right by the foot of a almost 3,000 meter mountain. And pretty early on, my dad started taking me up those mountains. If I didn't have my dad climbing with me, I couldn't have gone on my own. You, you just couldn't. You needed a man in your life, either a, big, a dad or a big brother or an uncle. Down in the city, I was a girl. I was, treated, I was being treated differently. Whereas when I went to the mountains with my dad, I felt like an equal. I loved the fact that I could just sit and eat with my dad's friends. When I was in the city, I had to wear a scarf, I had to wear a uniform. On the mountain, I, I had no one around me. I often could let my scarf fall, could feel the wind in my hair, could just, I could shout, I could scream, I could run. It was just the best feeling. We've come up about a thousand meters where we're doing uh, climbing Golizad. Um, so we've gone from about 2,200 to 3,200 now. And there's a snow line, so we're going to be uh, cross country ski touring up to the um, base camp. All I thought about was doing more, going higher. By the age of nine, ten, I had done the second and the third highest in Iran. My bedroom was just full of climbing books and anything that I could get hold of. Damavand was the, the big mountain to do in Iran, and my dad took it very seriously. I was 15 the year we wanted to do it together. 
Um, but unfortunately, that was the year that my dad's health deteriorated and all of a sudden he started having problems with his heart. That's when everything stopped. The dream of doing Namo Man ended there for me. The porters have just set off at the loads. Um, they're Afghani refugees, they work here as laborers. So they're gonna take the load up to the high camp, which is the last camp or the advanced camp, right in the middle. It's located at 4,200 meters. So today we're gaining around 1,000 meters. Just a regular mom of two young boys. Shall I close it? Yeah. Do you want a pillar, Avi? There we go. And maybe a bottle, a pee bottle. <laughs> Do you want a helmet? Because I grew up climbing in Iran with my dad up until 10 years ago, and then I moved here. So I feel like I can, I'm in a great position to bridge that gap between Iran and the West. It's not a country where climbers could just head out there and go and climb. It's quite a difficult country to travel to, especially as British Americans and Canadians. So I kind of feel like I'm in a position that I can help out with that. Damavans just have come, somehow become that symbol of my childhood dream. And the fact that I always saw it from Tehran and I always dreamt of doing it. We all got up at five o'clock and got ready. I was gonna walk up and the team was gonna ski up. For most of the way, we could see each other. I was on the ridge and they were on the, on the snow fields. Good job, guys. This is absolutely incredible. The prominence of this mountain, it just adds so much to it because you're not, you're not climbing in gullies and like valleys and surrounded by other peaks. You're just looking straight down to the valley at the bottom. Absolutely incredible. What a, uh, you know, what a view, what a terrain. What a just place to be of isolation. And the fact that we know we're the only people up here this day. As we were approaching the summit and we kind of hit 5,200 meters, I was being affected by the altitude and I started having a headache. I was starting to feel sick. My heart rate was really high. But then my friend just kind of pushed me on. <laughs> I always think about my dad when I get to the top of the mountains, but definitely I remembered him then. And I would have just loved to share that moment with him. They always made a huge fuss about summiting. He would make us all hold hands and then reach the summit together. You know, he would give the biggest bear hug on the summit and get the tea out. And he had so this whole routine, which I really miss. It's an Iranian woman. I really hope that uh, the Iranian women enjoy a bit more freedom in Iran. And also, I just hope that cli climbing gets more accessible for everyone in Iran, and especially for girls. And women hopefully really feel equal to men on the mountain, at least to some degree. And at least dream equally. <laughs> Show, show, show.